Okay, hello guys, and welcome to another edition in our lessons on our PIC microcontrollers uh, creation and programming. Um, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be dealing with some layout. Apologize, this video took a while to get out, like my post was a little few days ago. It's been really hectic. Um, had some issues with the capture software as well as uh, many different issues with microphones and things not capturing and working correctly. So, apologize for that. Uh, apologize for the delay, but uh, here we are nonetheless. So, okay. So, we're going to begin uh, with our layout. So, first of all, we need to get to the layout portion. In order to do this, we've got our schematic, and we're going to go up here to board. And you click on this, and it's going to tell us that our board doesn't exist, so we need to create it. So, okay. We'll go ahead and create that. So now it gives you kind of a basic board definition and kind of a dispersion of all the parts that you have. Now, for those of you that haven't ever used any type of layout software, these little wires, uh, come, this, they're called many different things, but they, they're basically uh, air wires. Uh, what they are is they're just showing you what needs to be connected, like this pin needs to be connected to the air, that pin needs to go up there, you know, they're just kind of showing you a place for the, you know, how things need to be connected, basically. So, anyway, let's go ahead and set up our, uh, our grid here. We're going to turn our grid on. We're going to put our grid in mils, and 50 mils is okay. Now, we need to get our board definition, like what our size of our board is. So, we're going to come back to our, uh, inventor deal, and we're going to pretty much just shut off everything but the board and the stuff that's on the board. Okay, there we go. Now we got a pretty good look at our board. So, let's go ahead and click on top here. Now, first things first, we need to get the dimensions of our board. So, let's grab our little ruler up here, and let's figure out what our dimensions are. So, our width is uh, 1955 mils, basically, because remember, mils are thousandths of an inch. So, 1955 is that way. So, let's go back. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use our information tool. We're going to come over here and we're going to click on this line. Now what this is telling you is this is telling you where it's coming from and where it's going to. Basically it is the endpoints of each end of the line. So what we're looking at on this from, we've got zero in the Y, which that's this point right here. We've got zero in the Y and we're out 13 or 39, 37. So what we need to be is 1955. So let's change this to 1955. As well as this other side needs to be pulled over to 1955 as well. So we're going to change that. Then when we hit OK, that'll shrink it in. Now we need to get the, uh, the other way. So let's grab the other way. Let's click right here. Um, right there. There we go. Okay. This one is... Oh is giving me bogus information. I'm going to restart this. Okay. Okay, 1623. That's better. It's 1623 this way. So now we're going to use our information tool again. We're going to click on this wire. So now, the X's are pretty well okay. So we just need to change the Y coordinates to our 1623. Okay. There we go. So there's our board definition. Now, we need to place our holes in the board. So we need to know how far from here to there it is. So, And since we've already got this side connected, we can just hover right over the hole and it should tell us the distance. So it is 0.287 away from the X. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring everything relative to this point right here. So everything will be pulled from you know, either this bottom or this side because you notice zero zero is right here. Um, if we look up here at our coordinates when we move our cursor, if we get to the origin, zero zero is here. So everything is measured in this program relative to this. See if I come over here, we're in the negatives up, up here. We're in the negatives, we go that way, we're positive in the x. Same thing, we go negative in the y, positive in the x. So you have to bear that in mind. So all your measurements, just for sanity sake, keep it um, simple, keep it measuring everything from this corner basically. So we're 287 in the X. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our hole tool. And actually before that we need to know the size of our hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click, we're going to choose done. Uh, or actually uh, you choose restart. And then we're going to measure the diameter of our hole. And our hole is 86 mils. 
So we're going to come over here and click on our hole tool. It's right here. Okay, we're going to change the drill to 86. And so now we're just going to plop that in there anywhere. And what we're going to do is go back to our information tool, and then we will set where what the distance is. So let's grab this point to there, and it's 287. So we're 287 in the X, and then in the Y, we're going to come this way, and we are 1501 in the Y. So we're 1501. Perfectamundo. Now we're going to use the duplicate tool right here. And we're going to duplicate this and just slide it over. Do not go up or down. Uh, keep it exactly in line so the, the Y coordinate is uh, held constant. And then just click. And then we're going to go back to our information tool. And now our Y is still 1501, but our X should be different. So now we want to measure from, uh, restart from this corner to there. And this guy is 1667. So he will be 1667. Okay, perfect. Now we do the same thing. We use our duplicate tool. Don't move any direction in the X because the X is set. We're just going to move in the Y. And then now we're going to use our information tool and we're going to measure, let's do restart, measure the distance from there to there. And that is 121. So both of these are 121 in the Y. Go over here, 121. Awesome. We just placed all of our holes. So we'll go ahead and save. Make sure you save. Save frequently. So we've got our holes. We've got our board definition. Now it's time to start placing parts. Now this can be a little tricky um, just because you have to pay attention to where this origin is. Um, see how there's this little X or this little plus here? That tells me basically where it's going to snap. When I choose the move tool over here and I click on this component, it's going to be snapped to the grid. See how it snaps to the grid there? But it's based on this origin right here. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is you have to keep that in mind where that is and it's basically centered between these two holes right here. So we'll have to keep that in mind and I'll show you why that's important later. So first off, I want to show you also uh, grid changes. If you need to change the grid and you want this to snap to the new grid, like for instance, let's say, let's type in grid 100 and make it a 100 mil grid. If you notice, it will always move in the in-between because it's it, it was actually laid out on a 50 mil grid to start with. So it's going to always snap to the space in-between. To get that to change, what you can do, oh and by the way, to exit out of that. Once I click on it, I'm just hitting the escape key. Um, but basically, you hold down the control key and click and see it snap to the new grid. Let me hit escape and I'll do that one more time. Hold down the control key and click and there it goes. See it snap? Okay, so that's how you re-snap to a different grid. So basically, we're going to take this thing and move it over here. I'm going to right click to rotate it around and uh, we're just going to kind of flop it in anywhere. So now, um, what we need to do is we need to figure out. Oh, whoops! And we need to figure out how far up this guy is. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to here, and we're going to kind of move this up a little bit so we can get a dimension line. We're going to measure how far it is from. Oops! Here, restart. How far it is from here to the edge, and it's about 580. So it's going to be about 580 mills. So now what we're going to do is first off what we're going to do is we're going to do 580 mils. So the easiest way to do this is use like a line of some sort and just draw a line. Just anything. Okay and then choose your information tool. Click on the line and we're going to make it in the Y direction 580. So in the Y direction we're going to be here, we're going to be 580, because you want to mess with this point, you know, move this, this point, not this one. This one, obviously, is the this top one. It's from here to there. So we want to mess with this one. So 580. That's where we should be sitting. So we're going to take and we're going to move this, oops, oh God, move tool. Move this guy, oh, somewhere in that space. Bot. 
may have to change the grid up a little bit. Um, that's probably as close as we're going to be able to get it. Alright. And then you just, you just delete this. Now, if there's any, I'm not an expert at this CAD software. If there's anyone out there, uh, the other softwares I've used, you're able to, once you pick a component to move, you're able to type in basically the coordinates of where you want it to go, and it'll just place it. Um, I don't know how to do that with the software. Um, don't know if, if you can. Um, so uh, by all means, anybody that knows, uh, please comment. I'm sure it'll help me. It'll help other people out. So please comment and let me know what, what that command might be. As far as another thing is, I normally don't like when I create a component like this, I don't like the origin being just like, yeah, off just somewhere randomly or in the corner or something. Or, well, or just, just yeah, out in the middle floating. Um, I would rather it be on pin one, uh, centered around pin one, because then that makes, um, when you go into like Inventor or something, you can just take this whole thing, rotate it around and grab pin one and measure where pin one is, and then you just boom, place the part. And then when you go into the information, this uh, position right here, you can change it to exactly what it needs to be. Well, see, technically, this position, this 310 and 820, is referring to this spot right here. Well, you know, that it could be half what you've got the thickness of these guys, and you know, all of a sudden you don't know what, where the hole's centered and everything to try to measure that out here. Whereas you can measure out and get the center of this pin and you know, plop that, plop that center of that pin, and if this was centered in here, then you'd, you'd be in exactly, you know, within a few thousandths of an inch, exactly the right place. But, since this was pre-made, we just kind of have to deal with it. And this is for, you know, this tutorial is kind of education anyway. We're not building something that we're going to produce. Um, outside of the fact that we will actually make this, but I won't be putting it in the box or anything. I'm just going to show you guys how to make the board. Okay, so we now we need to know how far it sticks off of the board. So, the next feat is what we're going to do is we're going to restart. We're going to get the edge to, oh, let's see, there we go. So, 289. So, 289. So, 289. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. Look at the line. We go like so. And then we're going to information. And then we are going to go minus 289. Voila. And then we're going to use our move tool. Probably have to reset our grid to like 10 or so. Oh well. Yeah, make sure you don't move up or down. Oops. Try, to, try not to do that. Back one. There we go. And same thing, we'll just delete. Okay, and that's basically how to plop stuff in. Just measure it in Inventor and then uh, plop it in. And then another thing, when you get uh, you know, like your ref deses and they get sideways or they get covered up, and e a quick easy way to be able to move them around is you use, I don't know why that they don't let you just move them, but you have to do this. You have to go over here to this, it's called Smash. It's called Smash Component. You click on it and all of a sudden you see that it kind of like, it, for those AutoCAD users, it kind of like explodes the part. Well now you can actually grab it and rotate it around, see, and then move it, you know, someplace where they're all right side up. Well, I'm going to go ahead and place the other components out, and we'll take a look at it, so I'm going to pause for a minute. Okay, I've gone ahead and placed everything, went ahead and placed everything out, did the same thing with this connector, I just measured it out, you know, pulled up Inventor, you know, measured it all out where it is, and just basically roughly did the same thing. All right, and then placed all the other components. And when you're placing your components, you want to make sure like components, you know, go next to the right devices because, um, like, let's say these capacitors right here that are the decoupling caps. Uh, let's see, that are, yeah, like this one, and like uh, these definitely these decoupling caps that sit on the power rails of these ICs. You definitely want them to be um, located close and you want to also probably route these by hand because a lot of times if there's a close like a, uh, a ground or a f because all it knows is that it's got to connect to a 5 volt somewhere and a ground somewhere. See it's got to connect to VDD and ground 
somewhere. So it may find that there's a shorter path to go maybe over here or maybe, you know, go down around the corner or something like that than to actually run up to where it should be connected. So those you might want to route yourself. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we we will uh, start routing this, but I think I'm going to wait for part two to actually begin routing of this just so our videos don't get huge. So um, that's it for part one for the placement and the board definition and whatnot. Uh, for part two we'll do the uh, actual routing and creating a ground plane and whatnot. So please look for that video. Thank you.